Hi to everyone, your Pyral here with some more Pokemon Platinum. Last episode, we explored Jubilife City here, got ourselves our fancy little Poketch, and we also battled Max again. Now, we're here in Route 203, we're going to be heading over to Orberg City because that is where the first gym is. Your favorite Pokemon should be placed at the top left of your party list. Yes, that is true. That's where Gembu currently is. Anyways, since we're here in a new route, there are a couple of new Pokemon for us to find. Oh, you're going to send out a Krikatot and a Zubat. How cute. Anyways, Zubat is actually one of the new Pokemon that we can find here. Zubat can only be found here when you're playing at night, but it's still something we can find. Zubat itself is pretty interesting. It's pretty fast. For it to uh, fully evolve, it's going to need to be at max happiness in order to increase Pokemon's happiness. Just make sure it doesn't faint, have it battle often, travel with it, things like that, and eventually once a Zubat has evolved to a Crobat and Crobat is at max happiness, or close to max happiness, it'll evolve into Crobat, but Zubat itself, really fast. It's actually a pretty good Pokemon. I recommend it quite a bit, and it's one that you can find early on. Pretty solid choice, even though it's one that you will be seeing quite a lot just because of how common it is, it's still a good Pokemon to use. One that I definitely recommend using. Now, there are some moves that would require other methods to teach it other than just uh, leveling up, but still, solid choice. The other Pokemon that we can find here is Abra. Abra is... It's the original really powerful psychic type really it's it's powerful but the thing is it's really frail when you catch it it only has the move teleport you're gonna need to eventually evolve it into a Kadabra. but once you do it hits really hard with special attacks and it's really really powerful in that regard but again it is really really fast really really strong with special uh, special attacks another downside i don't i don't know if you want to call this a downside but in order to get it to be fully evolved you will need to trade but that's i mean if you have the option of trading if you have a spare ds or a friend ready then you can get yourself a really powerful pokemon early on because ever doesn't take that long to evolve anyways that's it for all the pokemon that we can find here so Route 203 itself, this place is nothing really special. If I remember correctly, the demo for Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, or one of the demos, actually took place on this route. I remember when I was a kid, um, at like a kiosk in Walmart where they had a DS with the demo, and this was the route that you played in. I could be... I could be wrong on that, my memory might just be wrong, but it's something I remember pretty vividly. I don't remember what Pokemon you used in the demo though, but I do remember it taking place in this route, and the Pokemon were a little bit at a, a higher level, and there was more than just the Pokemon that were available here early on in the game. Like, you'd see Pokemon that you wouldn't be seeing until later on. But yeah, this that, that comes to mind whenever I... Uh, whenever I go through this route. See, before I challenge the gym leader, I'll test my strength on you. But yeah, anyway, since we are going to be getting to the next, or the first gym leader, I might as well talk about tight matchups. Oh, you have a chop. Neat. So, I've gone over the fact that Pokemon have different types and moves have different types, but type effectiveness is a thing that I kind of glossed over a little bit. I went over the the basic rock paper scissors that the game teaches you with water fire and grass but other moves and other types have their own strengths and weaknesses like for example machop here uh if you were to catch a starly around this point in the game and raise it to the point where it could learn wing attack wing attack is super effective against flying types now i won't be uh spoiling what the gym leader uses but the upcoming gym will be a rock one so for those that started off with Turtwig and Piplup, they'll have a bit of an easier time because both grass and water are super effective against rock, while fire is actually weak to rock and rock resists fire type attacks. But, ooh, Razor Leaf. Okay. Okay. 
now we're playing. But um, anyways, uh, Chimchar, if you were diligent enough to raise it to the point where it would evolve into Monferno, I believe that's at level 14, it would actually become part fighting, and fighting type Pokemon do have an advantage over rock types. And this helps with the fact that uh, Monferno, upon evolution, would learn Mach Punch. So, all three starters do have a way of dealing with the first gym. You do need to work a little bit for Chimchar, but still. And the game does give you other options to use other than those if you want to fight the first gym leader. So I'll be going over those when we get there. But anyways, uh, Razor Leaf here. Really, really good move for this point in the game, and it's one that I use on, Tur uh, on the Turtwig family for quite a long time. It, It's a little bit, um... It's not as powerful as some moves later on in the game, but it does have a high critical, uh, cr eh, high critical hit ratio. Also, I, I just like to have my moves in a certain order. But uh, it does have a high critical hit ratio, which means it's more likely to deal double damage. So let's let's test that out here. Our good old fancy Razor Leaf. It's, it's basically going to be the move that I use for for now, just because of how useful it is. Nice. And Gembu is going to be a little bit overpowered, but oh well. Let's see, I found a trainer while looking for some Pokemon. Okay then. But yeah, type effectiveness, that's something that... It, the first gym is there to help you learn more about the other different types, but as we go further in the game, you'll get accustomed to what is... Uh, what is strong or weak against other types. And... I mean, it's a lot to remember, if I'm being completely honest. There's, in this generation, there's 17 different types. Ooh, a Budu. That's interesting, but yeah. There, there's a lot to remember here. So, it, if you don't remember what every single type is strong uh, against others and weak against others too, then don't fret. Anyways, if I'm doing the math right, even though flying types do resist grass types, I think if I factor in same type attack bonus, Razor Leaf would actually do more than tackle. Even if it's not very effective. Either way, it's a level 4 Starly, so it doesn't matter. Now this trainer here. Ooh, you have an Abra. Neat. Uh, this trainer here has four Pokemon. So at this point in the game, I don't recommend having that many team members. I mean, you can have one that's used for utility purposes like Bidoof or whatever. But having like four actual team members, like say I wanted to have like like a Starly and an Abra and a Zubat on my team. I don't recommend that this early on in the game just because having to divide experience up amongst this many team members at this point is pretty difficult. So... That's something to keep in mind. I mean, it's, it's certainly doable, but still, try try to be wary of that. The more team members you have early on, the more difficult it gets to level them up properly. I mean, later on, it's also a bit of a challenge too, but there it's easier to manage just because you have more options available and things like that. Anyways, we're almost done with this route. Let's see, this here leads to Orberg City, but... Oh, you got a badge? Neat. Uh, there, there's still more to this route. And this trainer here has a Psyduck. Okay, that makes sense how you're able to get a badge, although your Psyduck is only level 8, so you must have had to work really hard for that. I probably should have used Absorb. Oh well. Now, th there is one... I think there's another item left in this route for me to grab. Probably. So... That's what I'm going to do before I head on over to where Orberg City is. Let's see, I'm collecting lots of gym badges. Good luck with that. You're going to need more Pokemon than that. So this item down here... Oh, come on. So there's an item over here. Oh, I see one right up there as well. An X Defend. That's an item that we can use in battle that will increase a Pokemon's defense. 
Now this item, probably nothing too special. Repel! Okay, so a repel is an interesting item. What it does is, if you use it, you spray it on you, and it prevents Pokemon that are at a lower level than the Pokemon that you have at the lead of your party from appearing. So because Genbu here is level 14, anything lower than that I will not encounter for the next 100 steps. Okay, so let's just go down here and go to the entrance. Try to avoid any encounters. Okay, then. Oh! This is our first time seeing a wild Abra. So one thing I actually forgot to mention with Abra is catching it does require a bit of luck because the only move it has is teleport, which will make it automatically leave the battle. Or if you're fast enough to put it to sleep so it can't use teleport, that is another way. But... You're gonna need to catch it with the first ball you throw, most of the time. I'm not even fast enough to attack it. Oh well. But that that is a thing. Anyways, inside here is the Orber Gate. That sparkling new Pokech. Your awkwardness as a traveler. Do I really seem awkward? Hmm, you're still a pretty new trainer, aren't you? But it's all good. You're a new fellow friend of Pokemon. So let me make a gift of this hidden machine to you. So we got HM06. This here is the move Rock Smash. So Rock Smash can smash small boulders in the field, but we need to have the gym badge from Orberg City. If you don't have that badge, you can't make a Pokemon use the hidden move Rock Smash outside of battle. Indeed. And you don't say anything else. Okay. But that is true. This is an HM. So HMs... I've gone over a little bit, but they are basically moves that you can use in battle and in the field. Rock Smash here will destroy any uh, breakable rocks. As you can see, it's a fighting type move. Really handy, actually, to use against the Orberg Gym Leader. We can use it in battle, but we won't be able to use it outside of battle until we get the badge. And Rock Smash, power 40. It's alright. It has a chance of lowering the opponent's defense. Pretty useful, but it is... In general, just a really weak move. Gimbu could learn it, and you might think that teaching it to your starter might be a good idea. Don't do not do that, unless it's a really good HM move, which there's only a few of. Moves like Rock Smash, where their only purpose is to be used outside of battle, I tend to use on Pokemon like Bidoof, who, whose purpose is just to use HM moves, just because HM moves, you can't delete them normally. Like, if a Pokemon were to learn a new move or anything like that, you you can't, like, replace HM moves so easily. Anyways, we have some new Pokemon here. First off, this is a Zubat, since we haven't seen one in the wild. But in terms of the new Pokemon that we can find here in the Orberg Gate, first off, there is the Rock-type Pokemon Geodude. Geodude, I don't recommend at all. It's slow. I mean, its attack and defense that are pretty solid. I mean, it is a rock, so I guess that's to be expected, but it's slow, it doesn't take damage well from special attacks, and because it's both rock and ground type, and those moves, or those types are weak to both water and grass, they have a four times weakness to both of those types. And you also need to trade to fully evolve a Geodude. Anyways, we can't go through here until we have access to using Rock Smash outside of battle, but Geodude... Don't recommend. Not at all. And the other Pokemon that we could find here, this one, you could actually, s I could actually recommend this for the first gym just because it's a water type. It's the Pokemon Psyduck that we saw earlier. Psyduck, I'll be honest, there's a lot of other water types in this game that are worth using, but Psyduck is interesting. It evolves into the Pokemon Golduck. Now, Golduck itself is not part psychic type, but it does learn some psychic type moves, which is interesting. And it also has, uh, one of its abilities actually is really nifty in that it negates the effect of weather. Which, it's not something we'll be seeing this, at this point in the game, but it's really handy. And I just dropped my stylus, hold up. Where did it go? Where did my stylus go? Oh no. Oh, it's all the way over there! <laughs> Bending down hurts. Oh, Genbu grew to level 15. Neat. And a Shinx. Okay then. Perfect. 
But yeah, Psyduck, because it's a water type this early on in the game, if you're having trouble against the first gym leader, try catching one, seeing if it helps. But yeah, that's it for the new wild Pokemon that we can find here. And we're actually pretty close to Horberg City. Also, because we are in a cave, like this trainer was saying, we just wherever we walk, we will find uh, wild Pokemon. All that's left to do is to just go past this trainer and we'll be at Orbrick City. Now, what do you have? I'm curious. You only have one Pokemon. You have yourself a Bidoof. If you're hoping to challenge the gym, you might need to catch another Pokemon. Oh well. Oh well. I mean, if you're just exploring and having fun, then go for it. Anyways, that's pretty much done. We are almost there. I guess losing is something to commemorate too. I guess. Been through the cave feels like an adventure. It must. I've never actually like been through a cave in real life. Anyways, this here is Orberg City. The city of energy. Oh, hello. Howdy, trainer. Huh? Uh-oh, you don't have a single gym badge. You better do something about that. I'll take you to the Pokemon gym. I just got here. There's more to see than just the gym. Huh? There's someone there. Yep, Max is here. Huh? Oh, it's you, Ralph. You finally got here? You're slow like always. But anyways, the gym leader's tough. Like, seriously tough. If the gym leader's this tough, I wonder how he compares to my dad. Huh? I, I just drifted there. Anyway, the gym leader's gone off to the coal mine. If you want to take on the gym leader, you'd better go off to the mine. Okay, but before we do that, we do have the opportunity to explore. And just quickly, I want to make note of the fact that there is a route above here. Uh, it's Route 207. We can't really explore much of this route. We can't go up here because we don't have a bike to go up this slope. But there are some Pokemon to fight here, some Pokemon to catch, some to train against. And let's talk about this briefly. So, one of the Pokemon that we can count here is this thing. Did I say count? Whatever. Encounter is what I meant to say. Ponyta. Ponyta. If you're playing through Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, this is one of the only two fire type families in the game. The other being the Chimchar line. Kind of... Kind of uh, pathetic that that's the case. But... In Platinum, there's more fire types, which we have yet to encounter. But Ponyta, it's decently fast. Looks cool. But it's more physically inclined. But most of the moves it learns in terms of like fire type moves are special based. So, not sure if it's something I can recommend, but I do like Ponyta's design a lot. The other Pokemon that we could find here, ooh, Pokeball, nice, is Machop. So Machop is a pretty nice Pokemon here. It's a fighting type. Another way to combat against... Oh, there's a Wild Judy. It's another nice way to combat against the rock types that we'll be seeing in the Orberg City Gym. And... Sure, ro the rock types in the Orberg City Gym are... Have more physical defense. And Machop is physically based. But still, Machop is pretty nice. One of the abilities it gets is Guts, so if it's inflicted with a status condition, its attack stat goes up by 1.5 times. Another Pokeball there. So that also negates the attack reduction that Burn has. Let's see if I can find a Machop here. But the other ability that Machop can get in this game is No Guard. Oh, here's a Machop. So No Guard means that no matter what, any attack that you try to hit with Machop or any move that's used against it, which is the downside to No Guard, they will always hit. And later on, the Machop family can learn this move called Dynamic Punch. Low accuracy, but very powerful, and it will always confuse the opponent when it hits. That combined with No Guard means it could deal a ton of damage. So, that's a... It's a really handy Pokemon to have. You do need to trade to evolve that one as well, but still cool. Anyways, Orberg City. Let me just, before we get around to actually exploring, I need to heal up. I mean, it's only a little bit of HP, but still, might as well. 
But Orbrick City, this is a place I really, really like. Let's see, we hope to see you again? Sure. Let's see someone's PC and access the Pokemon storage system. That's all you need to do. This yes, I know how the PC works. How to palpat at the Wi-Fi club downstairs. Yes, this is actually the first place where we can use the Wi-Fi club. Hmm, what or who is this Team Galactic? They make wonderful claims of a dream energy source on one hand, but rumor has it they steal Pokemon from others by force. It's a mystery. They're mysterious. Isn't anyone investigating them? I mean, I, I know a guy. You have a verse recorder, so did you go to the global terminal in Jubilee City? They, they wouldn't let me in because I don't have a badge. Anyways, let's, since this is now open downstairs, I'm not actually going to be using the feature, but let's we might as well talk about it. So this here is the Wi-Fi area of the the Wi-Fi club, I guess, of the Pokemon Center. The Pal Pad is an interesting item. That's your Pal Pad. You may register your friends in it. Once registered, you may link with those friends over a Nintendo Wi-Fi connection to trade battle and so on. Sure, let's how to register a friend. You may meet Pokemon on the second floor of a Pokemon Center for trades or Coliseum battles. You may register such people as friends in your Pal Pad. You can also manually register friends by entering their friend codes. That takes me back. Would you like me to know? I understood. So, the Pal Pad is an interesting item. You need it to, in order to play, well, back when Wi-Fi was available for this game, in order to battle and connect with people over Wi-Fi. We're, we're given a Fred code the first time we, were to lo uh, we are to log into Wi-Fi. I believe it's a 12-digit number or a 16-digit number. And it would be here in the Pal Pad. So, once you have your friend code, if you have it written down somewhere or something, once you give that to a friend and they register you, and you register their friend code, you will be able... Oh, name. For a second, I was like, that's not 12 or 16 characters. Okay, then. Yeah, let's... But once you do that, you would be able to... Go. You, you also do have a set number of friends that you can have. So, but you you go over to this clerk here, and then you'd be able to trade or battle with them. This is how I did a lot of my battles back in the day. Have a ton of fond memories of doing this. Filled up my pal pad multiple times. I would have to delete some people that I would meet online on like forums and whatever. But yeah, and we can also do like. Uh, different level restrictions for battles, like setting our Pokemon level 50, level 100, or free level, which is just whatever level your Pokemon are at at the time. Interesting. It's all an interesting thing. That we can't really do anymore. See, so I can't wait for us to register each other in our pal pads, and we can play together using the Wi-Fi club. Uh, well, not not in today's day and age. This here's the Wi-Fi plaza. I'll, I'll go over that a bit later, but... It's a thing that was introduced in Platinum. It's not in Diamond and Pearl. It's just a little thing where you could play like little mini games over Wi-Fi with random people. It was neat. Anyways, there's only one person left here I haven't talked to. You! It's your favorite kind of trainer, can you tell me? Uh, let's see. So, this person here will... I believe it's based on the ID number that the game generates, but... This NPC will give you one of four different trainer classes to choose from. So whenever you... Yeah, let's, let's go with Psychic. Yeah, so whenever you go into the union room to trade with people or you go to the Wi-Fi club, the avatar that you are presented with is that trainer class. So now, whenever I go to the union room, people will see me as a Psychic. It's a neat little thing, but oh well. Anyways next thing I want to do quickly is just go to the mart, see what's available before I actually explore this city proper. Pokemon is staffed by a lady and a young fella. They offer different kinds of merchandise. Yes, I actually talked about that. The badges that Pokemon gyms give you are a measure of a trainer's worth. Yeah, more badges means you can buy more items. Indeed. Can't really buy anything right now that's too noteworthy. And here, Heal Ball. I already went over that. The netball is an interesting item. It's more effective on water and bug types. So, if there's anything like that that you want to use in particular, try using this. It is a bit expensive because it's a specialty ball, I guess. But it's a pretty handy one. Now for me, where all I use really in most cases are Pokeballs, I, I'm, I don't really stick with netballs or anything like that. 
Wait, what vents? They released steam from down below. What vents? Oh yeah, right down here. It's an air vent that exchanges the underground tunnels air. So this whole thing, the whole vibe of Orberg City is that it's a mining town. It's, I like it a lot. The music here is pretty snazzy as well. And like just having like things like vents here just help reinforce that like them mining down is a thing. Oh wait, you're talking about trading? Yeah, so whenever you get a Pokemon from a trade, a Pokemon that doesn't have your ID number and such, um, it will actually gain more experience, but the downside to this is if it gains too much experience and gets past a certain level, depending on how many badges you have, then it might not obey you. Now here, you want an Abra for a Machop? Nah, I don't have either a Machop or an Abra, and I don't want any. Yeah, if Pokemon grows too much, you may ignore the trainer. Yeah, get more gym badges. Pokemon will, from outside of your game that you receive from trades or whatever, will obey you. All Pokemon have a special power called an ability. They do. Abilities have different effects. My favorite Pokemon's ability is my Patrice's pickup. Okay. Yeah, I thought Beedoof had that ability, but it doesn't. And then, apparently, I thought Piplup had tackle. But it has Pound instead. So I'm just... Dumb. To be fair, there's a lot of Pokemon to remember. So I can't remember... Everything. That's what notes are for. Let's see. But Rourke lets us train our Pokemon in the mine. Rourke? See, there are eight gym leaders in the center region. The objective for trainers is to get gym badges from them all. That means you have to defeat all of them in battles at their gyms. Oh, I plan to. The gym leader isn't, like, just any trainer you meet. Obviously, they're a lot tougher. A lot. I'd take as many Pokemon as possible if I were you. Or you could just train, like, a small number of Pokemon and have them be super strong. I mean, look up Genbu. Genbu, actually, if I'm being completely honest, Genbu is, a, is at a point where I'm not worried about this first gym. Are you catching Pokemon here? Take this. A Dusk Ball. This is one of the best balls in the game. The Dusk Ball works better at night or when you're inside a cave where it's just dark it's super it's an effective ball in those instances and for those that tend to just play the game a lot at night you're set honestly you oh so your husband named sadak yellow just because it's yellow Eh, nothing wrong with that i mean there's worse names you could name it but yeah the dusk ball is really really handy and when you're at a point where you can buy them, I recommend buying as many as you can, just because it's such a good ball. It's even more um, cost-effective than some other balls later on. You know, Pokemon have different natures like we have personalities. I don't think it's surprising to see Pokemon in different colors. That is true. There are different Pokemon, or there are Pokemon that are different colors, like uh, that are called shiny Pokemon. Regular Pikachu has a yellow body. All the different colored Pikachu has a sort of orange body. I already went over that, but shiny Pokemon are super rare. The chance of finding one in this game, uh, you have a 1 in 8,192 chance of finding a shiny Pokemon. Now, they don't offer you any advantages or anything. It's just a super rare thing for bragging purposes. You're not even running. That's the walking speed. Yeah, that's that. You're going to walking speed. I'm running with running shoes now, so ha. Huh. But yeah, shiny Pokemon. If you find one and you're able to catch it, consider yourself very, very lucky. Now there are some ways to raise the odds in your favor of finding one, but here can't really do that just yet. But I will go over that in a, in a little bit. Let's see here. Natural time capsules buried many years ago. That's what fossils are. Fossils are really, really cool. Now, there's a lot of places here. A lot of buildings to explore, but I like that. Your Pokemon could use some toughening up. Why not try training in the Orbrig Mine? Oh, I will. You remind me so much of the time I got my first Pokemon. Okay. Now, is there anything noteworthy up here? Maybe. Your Pokemon's eyes are twinkling brightly. See, that makes me happy. Great Ball, okay. So, a Great Ball is basically the next uh, step above Pokeballs. 
They're 1.5 times more effective than regular Pokeballs, whereas Dusk Balls at max effectiveness when you're playing at night or in the cave, I think it's either three or four times more effective than a Pokeball. But Great Balls, eh, I don't really use them. I don't... I just think for the price that you can get Great Balls at, they're three times more expensive than Pokeballs. Three times the price for just a small boost in effectiveness? I don't know. Anyways, the next building here, this is the Orberg Museum. Coal mining and you. This is a little interesting place where we can just learn about fossils and, and coal. It's just this big lump of coal. It's a little far from here, but there's a city called Eterna City. For the curious person named the Underground Man lives there. Name like that, he must be an authority on the underground. The underground, huh? Now this museum is pretty interesting because we don't have to pay, unlike some other museums. So that's neat. The Yorberg Mine extends under the seafloor. Oh, I didn't know that either. Never yeah, you never expect something this big. The color really is as black as they say. It's a lot of coal. It must have been really heavy. Oh. The, I, the thing I like about the museums and Pokemon games is like they teach you various random things. So like here, how coal is made. It's really cool. And then how coal is made too. The buried plant matter is forced even deeper underground due to tremors and fissures caused by the shifting land masses. And deep under the ground, the plant matter was subjected to pressure, magma, and became coal. Things like that. Then just get... We don't really get to see what's inside the display case. But, I mean, it, the text is pretty descriptive. See the box contains category samples of coal. I don't know, it, it just feels neat that this, like... Like, this city has its own unique feel to it. I like it. I like it a lot. And I remember, um, back before Pokemon Diamond and Pearl were released, um, there... I was reading a walkthrough from the Japanese version of the game. I believe it was actually Maryland's walkthrough where he was using the Japanese names of the cities. Where I believe this place is called Kurogane City. Uh, once I was reading the, the walkthrough for this section of the game, he was talking about how like you can see these different belts up here just transferring coal although i don't think they moved in diamond or pearl so just like hearing about that just really excited me it was neat i liked it a lot so i i always think of that walkthrough and that excitement that i felt whenever i think of orberg city super potion that heals 50 hp it's a bit much for this point in the game but i'll take it now, there's still some other buildings left for us to explore, and I do want to go down into the mine before I do anything else. Who are you? Taking a tour of our coal mine? Wonderful, that's excellent of you. It's always good to learn about new things and broaden your heart. I agree. Learning new things is always fun. See down here. Did I talk to you? Everyone's proud of the mine. They're digging for coal in the sea as we speak. Yeah, it is amazing. And then down here. There's more things. It's a pile of dirty sand. It's called a slag heap. It's the waste from sword and coal. Okay. Yellow shard. That's an item that we'll be making use of later. And this is a dire hit. This is like an X item. We use it in battle to increase the critical hit rate of your Pokemon. And I think... Yes, there's some items hidden here. A pearl. There's no item in this game called a diamond, unfortunately. Pearls are items that are meant to be sold. I think there's another item here. Yes, a hard scale. That's another item that will be useful for later. Is that it? There has to be another item here, right? Eh, whatever. Anyways, with that, all we have left to do is go down into the mine. We need to look for the gym leader, so let's, let's go ahead and do that. The Orberg Mine. I believe these belts weren't here. These conveyor belts weren't here in Diamond and Pearl in the entrance of the mine. I think. Anyways, now that we're here in the Orberg mine... Ooh, this is gonna be exciting. This is gonna be exciting. But I'm, I'm gonna hold off from talking about the one new wild Pokemon that we encounter here because... If I'm right, beating this wild Geo dude means that... Gembu will reach level 16, which means nothing is gonna happen. For a second, I was like, this is 
it. This is gonna be the level Gembu finally evolves. But no, that's not the case because Gembu evolves at level 18. So out of the three starters, Gembu is the one that takes the longest to evolve into its uh, next stage. Okay, so since I, I realized that I was just being... Like trying to be climactic for nothing and just be ended up being anticlimactic. Let's talk about the wild Pokemon that we can find here. That's new. I thought that would be it for the. I thought that would be the new wild Pokemon, but no, it wasn't. It was just a Zubat. Anyways, the one new wild Pokemon that we can find here is Onix. Onix is. It's all right. It's faster than something like Geodude. Its defense is pretty high. It's um. It's a pretty handy Pokemon to have at this point in the game. It'll be a while before you can get one to evolve because one, you need an item that it needs to be holding, a very specific item, and two, you need to uh, trade it. But Onyx itself, eh, it's all right, <laughs> I guess. I mean, I, I personally think it's a better rock type than the Geodude family, but it's still a rock and ground type, so it does, um, have that same four times weakness to water and and grass plus it is weak to other common types like uh ground and fighting ice steel the game likes to tout the rock type as one that's really good defensively but in all honesty it's not that good defensively just because most rock types or not most but some rock types are rock and ground and Rock itself just has a lot of weaknesses. In my opinion, Rock is just a better type offensively. Just because Rock type moves really good. Anyways, here we are in the mine. An escape rope is an item we can use to just quickly leave a cave or some other type of dungeon like that. But, yeah. Anyways, you're not, you're not the gym leader here. But there are some workers here who are willing to stop working just to battle with a kid. Maybe they're bored. Maybe. I don't know. Anyways, that ledge I went down. Uh, the, the way this room is laid out, it's a bit laid out like a, a big circle, really. And I figured just going down the ledge first would be easier. Uh, let's see, the chop. Sure, why not? You know... Gembu is getting really close to evolving, which is really, really exciting. So, probably not going to be evolving here, but probably at some point when we challenge the gym. Oh yeah, definitely at this rate I'm going. Let's see if I get back to work? Yeah, get back to work. I don't want to, like, bother you or anything. And who are you? Let's see you... Okay, stand back and watch this. Using the hidden move Rock Smash, a boulder blocking your way. Fallen boulders need to be smashed so they're out of the way. If you can get the badge from this town, or from the gym in town, you'd be able to do this too. Of course, you'd have to beat the gym leader first. That'd be me. Oh, so you're the gym leader. You didn't even tell me your name. It's a bit rude of you, though. Let's see a potion. Now, we do have that repel, so you might be wondering why I'm not using it. Oh, look, it's an Onyx. Now, you might be wondering why I'm not using Repel, just because these are weak wild Pokemon and they do interrupt the flow of things. But I, I don't like using Repels. It would make it easier for me to just walk around without being interrupted by wild battles every, like, two seconds. But the way I see things is, because of the way I play, I always fight wild Pokemon. Wild uh, trainers... No, uh, wild Pokemon gave experience and things like that. You snuck your Pokemon into work. Okay. Uh, using a repel to make it so you don't encounter wild Pokemon, you're losing out on potential experience, even if it's just a little bit. That small bit of experience does add up. If I were to ignore fighting wild Pokemon as I've been doing, or like I have not been doing, because I've been fighting them since the start of this Let's Play, if I were to not fight those wild Pokemon, Gembu here probably would be... I'm not even joking, probably be like level 13. So that does add a... Ooh, curse. 
definitely want to teach that. So curse. Very weird move how it works. It's a question mark, question mark, question mark type move, which that type doesn't exist in later generations. But uh, the way this move works is ghost types that use it have a different effect than the other types that use it. Ghost types, and they'll cut their HP in half to inflict a curse on the opponent. And that move, uh, that curse will lower the opponent's HP by a quarter of their HP every at the end of every turn. Not a good effect, in my opinion. But for other types that aren't ghost types at all, curse is an excellent move. Oh, okay, so... These Machop are yours, and that other worker there just snuck one in, like snuck his Pokemon in. Okay, but a curse for the uh, for non-ghost types that use it, they have a really good effect where their speed is lowered, sure, but their attack and defense go up. Whenever a stat goes up, by the way, it goes up by, um, by I think it's half of the original value of that attack stat. So let's take a look here. Gembu's, uh, Gembu's defense is 32. Uh, it would go up by 16, thanks to Curse. Or, thanks to, like, it going up by one stage. So every stage it goes by, up by another 16. You can use a move, or a stack can go up by six stages, so that's, I think, uh, three times, or four times more, uh, powerful than before. And then stat lowering is a different value, I think. But Curse is really handy for slow and bulky Pokemon like like Gembu over here, because Gembu doesn't need the speed, the, but the attack and defense drop would be very, very handy. Anyways, that's pretty much it. <laughs> We've explored all of Orberg City here. Really nice place. And we found the first... Where, where did Max go? We found the first gym leader. And I just want to quickly check. Because it's bothering me. Did I talk to you? Yes, I did. Nothing in that rock. Okay. Just I just wanted to make sure. But um, anyways, we explored Orberg City. We found the first gym leader. And now we're ready to challenge the first gym. In the next episode. Thank you all so much for watching. And... See you all next time for another episode of Pokemon Platinum. Later!